In this video I'm going to show how to generate electricity when you're near power lines or transformers. You're not going to get much power, but you're also not going to get electrocuted trying to do this. In the best case, this device can capture enough power to light up a small LED, so you're definitely not going to do anything exciting with it, but it serves as an interesting experiment in wireless power transfer. The device works by capturing a little bit of the magnetic field projected by power lines and transformers known as leakage flux, which arises from the fact that any electric current flow causes a magnetic field around it. To capture this, a coil of wire is placed in the field. As the alternating current causes the field to change direction, the change in magnetic flux causes the coil to produce a voltage. To increase the effect even more, an open-ended core of highly permeable material is placed inside the coil. A higher permeability provides a more favorable path for magnetic flux lines to travel through. This is the magnetic equivalent of electric current taking the lowest resistance path, and also how a loop stick antenna works, which is what most portable AM receivers use. I used a 35 by 200 mm solid ferrite rod as the core of my coil, and some 3D printed covers to wind the wire around, which would protect the wire enamel from getting scuffed off. I then wound 3 pounds of 28 gauge magnet wire around it, or about 6300 feet worth, more than a mile, or almost 2 kilometers of wire. The finished coil weighed more than 5 pounds, and there's somewhere between 11 and 13,000 turns. The coil measured in at a whopping 23 henrys on the LC meter. It's probably even more than that because the meter tends to read low a lot of the time. By waving this small neodymium magnet back and forth in front of the coil face, I could easily generate more than 5 volts open circuit. The coil was obviously extremely sensitive to alternating magnetic fields. To get the most energy out of the coil, I want it to resonate at a target frequency exactly the same way a radio receiver would. Let's treat the coil as an inductor and make it part of a simple LC circuit. Since I already know that the target frequency is mains frequency, or 60 Hz, I can solve the LC resonance formula to figure out the capacitance I need, which turns out to be about 300 nanofarads. By plugging in that result along with the resistance of the LC circuit, I end up with a Q factor of 20, which is the factor by which the voltage will increase in the coil at resonance. Obviously this will be a big help when trying to collect power. Now I could just throw the capacitors on and call it good, but I want to use my oscilloscope to fine-tune the coil to resonance as close as possible. To do this, I'm building a simple test board that contains the resonant capacitance, a diode, and a push button. When I hold in the button for a moment then release it, the circuit rings at its LC resonant frequency, and if it's too high or low, I can trim the capacitance accordingly. Here's how that looked on my scope. My LC meter reading was a little low and it turned out my inductance was about 28.15 henrys, which required a capacitance of 250 nanofarads to resonate at 60 hertz. The Q factor of the coil was also higher than initial calculations. Here the amplitude peaks at 24 volts with a 1 volt input pulse, meaning the Q factor is 24. That's pretty low compared to something like a radio receiver or Tesla coil, but at such a low frequency it's hard to achieve a high Q. Let's see what happens when I hold it near my breaker box. The air conditioning and dryer are on right now, so there should be a lot of current flow through there. I get over 5 volts if I put the coil in the right spot, but that's through a 10 mega ohm voltmeter, so basically open circuit. I'm going to hook up this LED with a 2K resistor to serve as a load and then see what it does. I've dimmed the lights so you can see the LED more clearly. It puts out a modest amount of light when it's in the right spot. I guess there's maybe around 5 milliamps or somewhere in that neighborhood. It's certainly not much, but it is electricity. I got better results putting the coil near my pool pump, which runs at about 15 amps. The coil will illuminate the LED about 3 feet away while the pump is running. It also worked near the mains coming into my work building. Okay, let's take a slightly more scientific approach. I've set up this loop of wire with the wires perpendicular to the coil spaced 8 feet apart. I have this large spacing because the wire on the opposite end of the loop will have current flowing in the opposite direction of the wire near the coil. The field vector from this current works against the field vector of the current traveling near the coil and reduces the overall strength of the magnetic field. If the opposite conductors are very close to each other and the coil is relatively far away, the strength of the resultant field can be close to zero. Alright, let's plug it in and see what happens. I have about 120 ohms of resistance in series with the loop, so that brings it right to about 1 amp even. The coil is sitting about 10 inches directly above the conductor. It generates almost half a volt 10 inches away. As I move it closer, I can get almost 2.5 volts. This still isn't much, but considering that it's from a mere 1 amp turn of wire, I'm actually kind of impressed. If I extrapolate that result, I can get this formula to approximate my open circuit voltage based on the distance and current of the transmission line. 
The only weakness of this formula is that it neglects the opposite conductor of the transmission line, so it's very approximate. Looks like my LED still lights up even in the weak field of this 1 amp current. Let's see if I can bottle up some of this energy in a big capacitor. I've sped up the recording 400%, but even at that speed it's painful to watch, so let's skip to the end. After about 5 minutes I ended up with 3.2 volts in the capacitor. While that's definitely usable energy, the average power input is absolutely abysmal. When I work out the math, the average power comes out to 56 microwatts. So if you want to rip off your power company, this probably isn't the best way to do it. Speaking of the power company, let's pay them a visit. I 3D printed some brackets and adapters to hold my multimeter and board in place, and went on a field trip. Let's see what the coil does from the massive magnetic fields around this substation. Hmm, I only seem to get about half a volt at best, but that's coming from transmission lines that are more than 30 yards away from me. Let's try it on a few other things. Here's my car charging at 32 amps. However, the two lines are really close to each other in this cable, so I have to be right on top of it to get anything out. But I can still charge my capacitor and turn on my LEDs, so that's pretty cool. It also seems to have a noticeable output near the input to my power meter, which makes sense. Supposedly these overhead power lines can carry several hundred amps, so maybe I'll get something by standing beneath them. Then again, maybe not. 0.23 volts seems to be about the best I can do. This might be because the opposite phases are relatively close to each other. So we've established that this thing can actually siphon an extremely tiny amount of power from being near alternating current, but what about intentional wireless power? Usually this is done with tens or hundreds of kilohertz, but I'm going to try to use this coil as a transmitter for 60 hertz. As you can see, it clearly puts out a strong alternating field, so it should be suitable to transmit a little bit of power at a few feet. In this test, my coil is about 3 feet away from the transmitter, and I'm getting 3 volts open circuit, and both my LEDs come on without a problem. I can charge my capacitor to 3 volts in around 25 seconds at this distance, so an average of half a milliwatt of power is coming in. The longest distance I managed was 5 feet, which got me about 1 volt. I think this range could probably be extended a lot by creating a transmitter with a much larger diameter. Anyway, the coil definitely works for gathering some sort of measurable power, but it's about as much a case of theft as picking crumbs off the floor of a restaurant is.